What's going on? This is David Whitney with Alpha Hawk Fitness. All right, guys, like I just said in my last video, if I'm looking a little chubby, it's because I'm on a little bit of a mini boat. I put on a few pounds, but it's all right. I'm taking right back off when I do a little mini cut. All right, for more information on that, check out my video on how I do mini cuts and mini bulks. But also, listen, one other thing. It's not, don't be so dogmatic about it. It doesn't have to be exactly the way I explain it. It's just basically, just do what you feel. You know, if you're in a cut and you're cutting and you want to keep going, you can keep going. You don't have to stick to it exactly. All right, but anyways, back to this video. There's a new study out that really just confirms what I was saying in one of my videos from last week, talking about intermittent fasting and how it's not optimal for muscle protein synthesis. They took uh, two groups. One group, they did a modified intermittent fasting where they did on training days, they let the people eat as much as they wanted. And then on non-training days, they had a four hour eating window. I know this isn't the typical lean gain style that most of us use, but still just listen. And I think the um, results could still be insightful for what we're doing. All right. The other group of people were just on a normal diet. So at the end of the study, what they found was both groups lost exactly the same amount of fat, but now listen, first of all, both groups lost the same amount of fat. With intermittent fasting, we always believe we're going to lose more fat than the other group. So right there, so it's kind of just a level playing field. It really just comes down to preference. I like intermittent fasting because it helps me with the adherence factor because I get to eat a lot of my calories at night and that's when I always broke down on my diet. Now there are some benefits to intermittent fasting, but this study shows that they weren't even enough to show up on the statistics in the study. So, the, but the other thing that's important for this video and applies to muscle protein synthesis is that the fasting group gained no muscle while they were dieting, but the other group who were doing a regular style dieting did gain muscle while dieting. So listen, why is that, right? Well, like I talked about in my other video, intermittent fasting isn't optimal for muscle protein synthesis because the way muscle protein synthesis works is you can't just cram all your protein into an eating window and think you're going to be just synthesizing muscle the whole time. Muscle protein synthesis works in spikes. You spike your leucine up to three grams is the threshold where you get the maximum benefit. And then you got to have a refractory period where the leucine, the aminos taper off and then you spike it again. If you got an eight hour eating window, you can spike it at the beginning of the eight hour eating window. And then you can wait three, four, five hours and you can spike it again. But it's pretty much going to be impossible to do it three times inside that eating window. Whereas another person who's doing eating their meals throughout the day, they could spike their leucine levels four, five times a day. So you see, you might have slightly better fat loss results doing intermittent fasting, but you're going to have less muscle gains doing intermittent fasting. I'm sorry, man. Don't dislike the videos. Please, guys, don't get mad at me. I'm just, I'm going to point the studies and show them to you. What I'm doing is I'm still fasting, like I said in my last video, but what I'm doing is like Dr. Lane Norton suggested, I'm getting my protein throughout the day. I'm still getting my protein all day. I wake up in the morning, I have a protein shake. That's it. It's, it's way isolate, so there's zero carbs in it. I go about three, four hours, I have another protein shake. Then about three, four hours after that is when I start my eating window, and I, that's when I get all my carbs and everything. Now you might say, well, that's not fasting because you're getting protein. It's true that it does break the fast, but Removing carbs, it's been shown in studies that just removing carbs from your diet mimics a fast. It mimics the same benefits that you get from fasting. So the leucine will raise your insulin levels slightly, but leucine actually helps you with insulin sensitivity. So even though it will take you out of the fast more materially, it will quickly bring you back into the fast. And the benefit you're getting is more muscle protein synthesis, which is something I think we're all looking for if we're into physique training. All right, so where am I at now? Oh, okay, another study I wanted to mention is one done by Jose Arreta, and I will link this in the description along with the other one I just talked about. And he showed how they took three groups of people. They all were getting 80 grams of protein. The first group was getting two servings of 40 grams. The second group was getting four servings of 20 grams. And the third group was getting eight servings of 10 grams. And they saw in the end that the one that got the best results was the one that was getting four servings of 20 grams. Now, why is that? Well, that lines up exactly with the research of Dr. Lane Norton, 
where we see that the leucine threshold is three grams, also with the researchers, um, Stu Phillips, that shows, you know, you gotta have this refractory period in between the, um, the protein meals. So let's look at the group that was getting two servings of 40 grams of protein. They only initiated muscle protein synthesis two times. The group that was getting four servings of 20, they initiated muscle protein synthesis four times. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, what about the group that was getting eight servings of 10? Didn't they initiate muscle protein synthesis eight times? No, because like I said, we have to have a refractory period of where the aminos taper off. And that's been shown to be about three to five hours where our, it takes for our aminos to baseline and then we spike them again. It can't just be flooding our blood with aminos, having a, um, in our bloodstream, aminos all in our bloodstream all day long. It won't, the muscle protein synthesis won't just keep going. Even if the leucine levels are high, it's the uh, muscle protein synthesis still will taper off. So what we gotta do is let the leucine levels taper off while the muscle protein synthesis is tapering off and then after three to five hours we spike it again and that's what the group who was getting four servings of 20 grams was doing all right guys i'm gonna link the studies in the description like i said in the last video i talked about this somebody thumbs it down i know we got a lot of diehard intermittent fasters hey me too i love intermittent fasting but i also like getting oh, my arms look small i also like gaining muscle Maybe too much intermittent fasting on his bicep. <laughs> I don't know. I gained a couple pounds, but like I said, I'll take it back off when I get into my little mini cut. All right, I'm going to link the studies. Check out my Instagram, alphahawk underscore fitness. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. No more thumbs down if you're a diehard intermittent faster. I understand I am too. I love it, but I'm just looking at the studies, guys. All right, until next time.